Coming up on the next episode of Painting and Travel, it's all aboard as Roger and Sarah Batsimer ride the rails through picturesque Royal Gorge and explore magnificent landscape painting opportunities high in the mountains of Colorado. Right now we're in Hans Peak Village. It's a beautiful little town here, just a few little cabins and, and buildings. And as you can see on the top of that mountain up there, there's no trees. And it's not because we're above the tree line, although we are quite high in altitude. It's because this was a gold mine town years ago. And back in the 1800s, they took all the lumber and stripped it from the top of that mountain where they were uh, digging for gold. And they used it to shore up their, uh, their tunnels and so on. And the trees have never grown back. But we found this beautiful little teepee here. And uh, for those of you that are really into Western art, I realize this is not the authentic uh, teepee, but it's, it's more of a party teepee. But it just had a nice little feel to it. So I thought I'd do a painting today. Being from the South, we don't see things like this very often. I hope I can hold up on this because I've been painting all day. This is not the first painting I've done today. Steamboat Springs is about 27 miles from here and we uh, just happened upon some people there and they said they were having a paint out. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's a group of artists with uh, sort of the same interests that like to uh, paint on location, paint outside. And they all get together and paint in the same general vicinity. Someone else is down there painting right now. Uh, in a different location, but they're all sort of focused in on the same beautiful sites here. So I decided to join in these paint outs and uh, this is like the fourth or fifth painting I've done in the last couple of days. Before I get started any further, I'm just using a real limited palette here right now. I'm using titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, alizarin crimson, and Indian yellow. I'll add a few more colors a little bit later. For right now, I'm going to stay with those. I'm trying to figure out a little bit of a composition here. I love these, these pine trees here. They're just a rich, dark green. And then we have this teepee here. And I moved up so I could, so these te so this uh, pine tree would sort of intersect this teepee because I want these two elements sort of connected, sort of the same. I, they're both strong features, so I don't want them to be separated. What I'm using here is these transparent colors and they'll give me some good rich darks to use as a base. I've also covered this board. This is a masonite board by the way. I've also covered it with uh, some burnt sienna uh, when I left home. So I have a sort of a nice warm feeling of this uh, to work on as a base to begin with. But I'm going to go ahead and, and, and just put in all these darks. As I look at this tent I see a real cool shadows but there's got a lot of reflected light on it too because there's a lot of a lot of grass and trees behind it so I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to this to make this a little bit green back here. As Sarah and I have traveled around Colorado we've stopped in a lot of wonderful places. We were in Denver Colorado and we went to the art museum there which was really uh, worthwhile seeing. We spent a little bit of time in Boulder, Colorado, and they have a beautiful downtown there. But one of the highlights of our trip was being in Canyon City, which is quite some distance from here. And there we got to ride on a diesel locomotive through uh, Royal Gorge. So maybe this is a good time to uh, share a little bit of that with you. Welcome to the train depot in Canyon City, Colorado. We're at the Royal Gorge route train and it's diesel powered and we're going to take a nice trip today. Let's get some tickets.
What's the last name, name on your reservation? Bansomer. And you all are riding in the captain? Yes, we're riding with the engineer. Oh, that'll be wonderful. I think it'll be a good experience for you. Can I have you sign here for your tickets, please? Sure. Good morning. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. You're Chad? Chad, yes. Engineer? Yes. I'm Sarah Bansimer. Hi, Sarah. How you doing? Just great. I'm very excited about this ride, and I hope I can make the climb. The railroad, with its 1950s-style era engine and passenger cars, operates daily and winds through the Royal Gorge on a 24-mile round-trip journey. This beautiful two-hour ride will take us on what is the most historic and scenic portion of the former Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. There are several ways to experience the gorge while on the train. We've been lucky enough to be in the cab, but most passengers choose from either the coach seating, Vista Dome, or the open-air cars. The staff also serves meals while on board. Another way to experience the gorge and the Arkansas River is by whitewater rafting. Many companies offer excursion packages for this natural attraction. Chad, when we get close to the suspension bridge, could we stop and take a quick look from underneath, looking up? Sure. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, yeah, we can stop. But first, we have to make our way to the other end of the train, where the engine that was on the end will now become the front engine, which will take us back to the depot. Built in 1929, construction began on this, the world's highest suspension bridge at that time, towering over a thousand feet above us with a length of 1,260 feet. The pedestrian bridge leads to a park with rides and shows and other attractions. That was great, I enjoyed it. fun trip and I think Sarah and I both always wanted to blow the whistle on a train engine before and we got to do that on this trip. 
What I'm looking at now is the, this side of the teepee, and it's catching the sunlight. And uh, so I'm going to keep that a little bit warm. So I'll get a little bit of yellow in there, but not too much. I'm going to mix it with some of my other colors. I'm going to make this even darker right in here. It's really, really dark. So I'll just take alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of my Indian yellow. And I'll darken that up right now. And then I can put those lighter green colors over it. I think I'll make this darker down here. One thing to remember when painting outside, and I often forget, is my colors will appear much darker on this painting when I bring it indoors because the sun is so bright out here, it, uh, I just tend to paint a little darker. And uh, if I'm aware of that, I try to keep my colors a little bit light, but my paintings tend to be dark anyway. But I always like to work from dark to light. I'm mixing up some cerulean blue and white right now. Looks like I've got a little bit of lizard and crimson, some of these other colors in there. One way to keep harmony within my painting is to mix some of my other colors with the color I'm just mixing now. I'll just touch a few little negative areas in here to start with. So I'll get some more cerulean blue and I'll just mix it with what I've got here on my palette. That way hopefully I'll just keep a little bit of harmony in these within these colors. I'm just going to suggest a little bit of mountain coming through there. What I'm going to do with here is these negative areas. I'm going to work back and forth on them. So I'll put in some negative areas and then I'll, then I'll paint some trees over that. So I'll just keep sort of bouncing back and forth. Oh, now's a good time before the light disappears any longer, any further, to get my digital camera out. And we'll take a photograph of this here. Yeah. That way I'll have some reference material. It's a beautiful lake down there too, it's a state park. And we'll just put a little hint of that in there. I usually don't use very much palette space. As you can see, I just continue to uh, sort of mix in the same area. And that could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. In some ways it, it could help to get my colors muddy. Uh, and, uh, but. If I'm lucky, it also helps to keep my colors sort of harmonious. Now I've mixed ultramarine blue and Indian yellow, which are both transparent colors, so that's going to give me a dark green. But I've added a little bit of cadmium yellow into that, which I added onto my palette there from, from the beginning. And I can suggest the light on the edges of these beautiful pine trees. So far I haven't used any white in these greens, but uh, I'll put some white in in a little while, but right now I want to keep these colors sort of rich, rich and pure. If I add a little more yellow to this, these colors will be much brighter. If I add white to it, uh, the intensity of the color will start to drop off. You know, I could have stood to have this even darker back here to begin with. That's really the darkest part of my painting. Well, I like to keep things, I like to juggle things all at once, keep a lot of things going. So I've got the painting covered, which is really one of my goals always. I need to cover a little more of the sky, but I think I'll start to lighten the painting up at this point. Cerulean blue and cadmium yellow. This will give me a nice light color. And since this is kind of a beat up brush, I'll just sort of work with the edge of this brush. And hopefully that will just give me an indication of some weeds and flowers here. These are acrylics. The one real advantage to the acrylics is that they, since they dry so quickly, unlike oils, in, in a short amount of time I can go back and I can glaze over an area. We've got a real dark area right up here at the top of the tent. So I'm going to use a little bit of black, put a little cerulean blue in it. I'm going to work a little bit more on this side. I'm, I'm not really, I really don't like that color, that value there yet. 
And it's really hard to determine what color some of those things are because they're, they're basically just a gray, but you can't mix black and white and put that black and white on there. That will be totally wrong. So there's a lot of color there. It's just hard for the brain to figure out what it is. Down here, it's going to be warmer than up here. The reflected light from all this is going to be a little bit warmer. But I'm going to get some cerulean blue, a little bit of ultramarine, I mean cerulean blue, and a little bit of alizarin crimson, and a touch of white. And I'm going to see how that works in there. I think that works pretty good because that, that's it's fairly warm down here. Now as it goes up a little higher, it's going to get a little bit cooler because we get more of the, the light reflecting from the sky. All the light coming on this side of this teepee is from the sky. It's not from the sun. So we have really, we basically have two sources of light we're working with here. Actually, we got more, but simplify things. We'll just say two. We got two sources of light. We got the sun and the sky. Now the sky is a really huge source of light. Um, and we just don't often realize how big a source of light it is. For instance, if you were on the moon, if I were painting this on the moon, that's this side of the teepee would be totally black. There would be no shadows. There would be, you couldn't see anything there. Maybe, maybe a little bit of reflection from us, the stars or the earth or something, but this would be black. So all this light here is coming from our atmosphere and the blue sky. See, this is a little bit warmer down here, a little bit cooler up here. Maybe when this dries a little bit more, Maybe I'll just put a, uh, a little glaze of uh, green down there too, just to tie this grass and this teepee together. We also have some beautiful aspen trees here. I'm debating whether to put one or two of those in. Let's just, let's just drop one in to see what happens. Now, whenever a tree hits the ground like this, it's gonna create a shadow. And these uh, aspen trees always tend to be very dark at the bottom. I don't know why that is. So I'll just take some of that same color as the base of the tree and lose that edge. So I don't really know where the bottom of the tree is and where the dark grass starts. This is really a good opportunity to, for me to show the uh, slant of this land. So maybe I'll come back up here, put in some lighter green and just slope it down a little bit. There's a lot of texture in this scene here, but I don't want to have all texture in the painting. I have to sort of give the viewer some eye relief by getting some flat areas and those flat areas will be this sky and maybe some of these distant grasses and distant mountains. Now the color closest to me will be the brightest, be the purest color and be the brightest color. All this grass right back in here, it's probably going to be the brightest green in the whole painting. And the other thing that's making this grass so bright now is the sun is coming through the grass. If it were shining on the grass, it wouldn't be quite as bright. But it's just like putting a, a light behind something that's translucent. It just glows. And that's what this grass does. It just sort of glows when the light shines through it. Got some beautiful sunlight coming right across the front of this teepee as well. Everywhere Sarah and I drive, we just want to stop and I want to get my paints out and we want to film. Well, this is dry here, you see, so I'll mix up a little bit of a warm color, maybe sort of a Indian yellow. And we'll just drop in a few little highlights here. Maybe I'll spray this first. By spraying this, it'll give me a soft edge as I paint, because these colors will sort of flow out a little bit. Painting on location is very difficult. It's just not the romantic sort of a notion that I might have had in my head one, one time about painting outside, dealing with these elements of sun. And here in Colorado, altitude even, it's very difficult. But I will say one thing. I, I see more colors out here than I ever see anywhere else in a photograph. Just looking at things in real life and real nature I just see so many more colors than I, than I could ever imagine in a photograph. So it's a real good advantage. It's, it's, it's a, if the painting doesn't come out like I want it, 
Uh, and I always hope it does. I'm always disappointed when it doesn't, but it's just paint, you know. Uh, I've learned a whole lot by being out here. Now, I said I would put a little bit of reflected light down here. Let me give that a, let me give that a try. Ultramarine blue and Indian yellow. Now, those are transparent colors, so I can, I'll, I'll spray this a little bit, and I'll just put this little wash of green there. Now that sort of just takes this earth and just flows it up into this little teepee, just ties this all together. Well, I, I want to put a few more highlights on these trees, a few more highlights on this teepee. I want to put those little sticks up there. Maybe I could do, do that now. That might be fun. Lizard and crimson, ultramarine blue, that gives me a dark purple color. Add a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna make these sticks all dark to begin with. I'm sure there's a term for them. I don't know what it is. It might be nice to know all the history behind TPs or the history of whatever it is I'm painting, but it's not always necessary. And it's, it's really not necessary. This is a visual thing and uh, I've painted marine paintings and yachts and boats. I really don't know, don't have to know the names of everything or the functions totally. It would be good, but you know, we all have a limited amount of energy and everything else. So I tend just to sort of go with my instinct on a lot of these things. I just don't let it stop me, you know? <laughs> Oops, did I feel a drop of rain? Perfectly blue sky. I think I felt a drop of rain. Maybe not, maybe I'm just, what is it, getting uh, delirious? <laughs> I've been in the sun for three solid days painting, and I think it's, it, it really does take its toll. But, you know, I'm just, really am passionate about this stuff, and I just see something that I, I just love to get down on on canvas, I don't even know why. Often I think these paintings are gonna really turn out disastrous. But if I stay with it, I can generally pull them out, pull them around. And I think that comes with just being stubborn all the time and not, uh, not giving up on this. Well, it's starting to come together. I love these blue mountains back here. I think I, think I may leave these, well, you know, I could put a little more a little more color in there, sort of a purplish. Let me spray that. I do love some of this burnt sienna color on the board coming through. It gives it a nice warmth. This would be a beautiful spot to put in a few little negative areas of this lake. So let's just see if I can see some of this lake between these trees. I also have to be careful not to make all my little negative areas the same shape and size. I need to vary those. Of course, these negative areas have, they can't just be spots of sky. They really have to describe the trees around them. And whenever I put these in, I try and do that. I finally feel like this is starting to come together. I always panic, you know, when I first start these paintings. I say, oh man, this is going to be a disaster. But uh, starting a painting, it just has to be very basic. You've got basic shapes, basic colors, just big blocky areas. So when I first start a painting like this, I always feel like it's a bit of a gamble. Like I don't know exactly where it's going. I know where I want it to go, but uh, often the paintings take their own turn. What I've neglected to do in this painting here so far is to put some of the uh, shadows over this teepee. It's, it's funny how you can just see, look at something and see it for so long and just almost forget to do certain obvious things. <laughs> mm, I always hate to stop once I get going. I get to a, I get to a point where I feel like, yeah, this is starting to 
I, I can do this, you know? But that's when the light sun starts to set. Just so I remember, I see beautiful reflected light on the back side of these aspen trees. So I'm going to mix up a warm color, a little bit of white, and I'm just gonna put some reflected light on the back side of these trees. Well, the shadows are getting really long now. It's just about at the end of the day. I'm exhausted from painting the last three days. Before I go, I'll uh, show you a few of the paintings that I've done around this area. And then we'll take this back to the studio, put some more touches on it. I'll sign it, frame it, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. Okay. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.